Hey, welcome back to Race Create Cards. I am so happy to be with you on this Friday. Hope you've had a great week. So, in today's video, we are going to be redoing what I originally did for the Tuesday Live. I took it down. Um, it, it hadn't been up very long. I took it down because the video was sideways. The reason why the video was sideways, I logged into StreamYard and there was a notice from StreamYard as soon as I did saying that there was an issue with YouTube. YouTube was investigating, but it wasn't showing the videos on the channels and that's the whole idea behind doing one, right? Um, so because it was done directly from YouTube, even though I had my camera in landscape mode, thought I had everything set, it still always wants to do it vertically. And when I film a pre-recorded video on my phone, just like with this one that I'm doing for you today on Thursday, um, just um, I always have to rotate it on my phone before I upload it to make sure it does show you in landscape mode. So I went to YouTube, I got on my uh, actual desktop, and I thought, okay, well, I'll download it and flip it and re-upload it. Well, the download button was grayed out, so I went in on my phone, and the option was to save to device, and I thought, oh, that works, and it didn't. Within, like, three seconds, I had a notification sound that it was done, and we have this wonderful new internet. Even so, I thought, man, really? So I went and I checked in my, in my uh, photos. And all it showed was a little square white screen with zero content. So I deleted that, tried it again. I thought, okay, well, there was just a little glitch somewhere. And it did the exact same thing. So at that point, I just took it down. I thought, you know, I'll just redo it. It won't be live, but it'll be okay. So, we are using the Simply Zinnia. I had gotten um, able to play with it just a little bit. Now, I'm going to tell you that DSP, it is beautiful, but it's loud and proud. So, just in initially playing with it, um, I cut a four by five and a quarter piece. I uh, backed it with Blackberry Bliss, and I put it on, I believe this is Granny Apple Green. Anyway, um, I did that, and I fussy cut around the sentiment that I just stamped in Memento Black, and added some of the bling that comes in that suite, which is called, what is that called? Adhesive Back Shiny Sequins, and they are truly, really shiny. And uh, the colors that are in there is Lemon Lime Twist, Lemon Lolly, Melon Mambo, and Pumpkin Pie. So here's your Lemon Lolly, here's your Pumpkin Pie, and different shades of Pumpkin Pie in there. It's really, really pretty. Um, but yeah, I used... If you can even see it on that busy background, I tried to find some white areas. So there's one, there's one, and there's one. And that was really, really cute. And I thought, you know, to mass produce some simple cards and get a bunch done, uh, you could put any kind of a sentiment on there you wanted to, right? That was great. On the inside, I uh, stamped and die cut out of the same set, the double leaf, and just put that inside the card because I honestly don't know who might end up getting that card. Well, I really wanted to play with the dies. The issue was, because all of that DSP is so bright and bold, um, I ended up turning this piece over, and this is the back side of it. And because I didn't have the other colors contending, I actually took Sweet Sorbet Flirty Flamingo. And I loved playing with these dyes. They were amazing. And I wasn't like 100% thrilled with this card. In person, it looks so much better than it does on camera. So I thought, okay, I want a way that I can focus on just the dyes and a little bit of stamping, and let's see what I can come up with. So, 
We're also bringing in that Zinnia 3D embossing folder. And let me give you a heads up if you haven't really paid attention to it. Um, it is directional. So if you are going to do a portrait style card, your card stock will need to go a certain way as opposed to, uh, or even doing a landscape. You still, you either want to put your card stock in landscape format or in um, portrait up and down format. So be mindful of that. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Anyway, well, we are going to be using that today. And let me very quickly place this to the side because I had somebody ask me about cutting the 12 by 12 um, in half when you have a design on one side and then that same design is on the other side. So this was on one end and the other was on the other end. I, I had already done it in the live video, so I can't undo it, right? And I had already cut into the other panel when I very first started playing with it to get this. But you're simply going to take that DSP and you're going to put it in your trimmer. And where it's white, you're going to cut it at six inches, okay? And then just simply take at that point and then cut at four inches and at four inches, and you'll have yet three panels of four by six. When you get ready to trim that up, and I don't know how many of you might need this information, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut another panel. So, in order to get it to the five and the quarter, because there was all this white space up here, I simply turned it, put it to the five and a quarter, and cut this off. Now, if you want to, you can actually come down to like a five and an eighth so that you're not taking quite as much and then take another eighth off of this end. I was absolutely happy with this particular design to cut that off. And there you go. That does not look bad at all. How nice. So for those who have wondered about it, because I did have somebody ask me the other day, all right, so for today's card, you're going to need a four and a quarter by 11 inch card base, and we're fixing to score that at five and a half. I've got my uh, Simply Scored tool sitting right here. Make sure I'm in the camera. And we're going to line this up at five and a half right here. Let me get my stylus, and we are going to score this at five and a half. There we go. We got it. And then I'm going to take and flip it and make sure I'm lined up. Take my bone folder and bring up. It doesn't seem to matter how well we measure, cut, or anything else. There's always a little excess right there. I'm going to take that and then just score that the best we can. And get that down. And that came out relatively flat. But let me tell you this. If you want it to lay totally flat, use the bigger end. I use the smaller end, but use the bigger end. You'll have a bigger fold. And then when you get ready to burnish on that fold line, it will lay flatter. But that honestly, that's not bad. Okay, we're done with that. Put that to the side. You will want two pieces of basic white. One is going to be cut at four by five and a quarter, and that's for the inside of the card. And one is going to be cut four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and that is going to be for the outside. I'm just going to go ahead and glue my inside piece in there. We're going to decorate it here in a little bit, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, glue this in. Hopefully, I haven't used this glue bottle in two or three days. Make sure it didn't uh, clog up on me. It did a little bit. Let me recap that. Kind of fix that a little bit. That's really all you have to do. Of course, I have a little bit of dry glue right there. Let me get that off. Now, it should be good where I can finish. There we go. Now, it's coming out. 
And sometimes I don't always uh, prep my glue very well when I get ready to um, stop crafting and walk away. So there we go. Now we've got that on the inside. And we're going to take this piece and we are going to emboss it with that ZD 3D ZD Zinnia 3D embossing folder. It's late in the afternoon, guys. I hope I can talk. Hope that's not a premonition of things to come. And I'm going to use my Stampin' Up! Cut and Emboss Machine. I do like it. Um, and I do use it in my craft room. Um, I like my Gina K. But this one does have... Ooh, it's got a little bit of stuff on it. I've been die cutting hot and heavy in my craft room. Can you tell? And we're just going to lay that in with the fold side going forward. I'm going to put that specialty plate on top. And run that through. And I know I'm on a, a paper backing and now it's all sliding around. That's why I don't like to die cut and stuff on screen. But we have to today. So let me put this to the side. Retrieve this. And I don't know if I had already told you guys this or not. Let me straighten back up here. Um, I honestly, as much as I like the embossed side, which is the side where the design is raised, I really like that deboss side. There's something about this embossing folder. If you plan on getting this new online exclusive, when it goes live to you on March 5th, see what you think after you run a piece of cardstock through there, Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take and lay this down. And again, I like that deboss side even better. I'm going to glue this down. Bear in mind, when you emboss a piece of cardstock with all the little hills and valleys, ups and downs, you will want to add extra glue just to make sure you get good adhesion. And I need, I don't know about you guys, I do better when I turn it to where it's long side facing me so that I am a little bit more even in getting everything down and placed. And there we go. And I, you may have to hold it a little bit. Sometimes when we emboss, especially with the 3D embossing folders, it kind of thins the cardstock out just a little bit. And so I'm trying to make sure I'm down all the way around. So there we go, and I'm going to lay this to the side for the minute because we want to play with the dies today. We're not going to worry about the designer series paper or any of that. So you will notice there are two dies. One is a little bit bigger than the other. Okay, that's for layering because a zinnia does have lots of layers of petals. We are going to be using this for the middle of the flower as well as this one, but I'm going to leave them in here right now. And I think I want to use this one. We'll get to that in just a minute. So, on top of that, you're going to want some black scraps, and you're going to want a pretty generous piece of the white. So let me get my Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine back up here, and I think I'm going to offset this for the minute so that I'm not fighting with that paper and I don't want to cover up my dies so I am going to take the biggest die of the two which is going to be this one and I'm going to cut it at a black cardstock and hopefully I have bought so here's my platform here's my homemade magnetic sheet that has a cutting plate on the back of it if y'all have been around me any length of time you know i've explained how i came by that and we're gonna cut two of that biggest petal from the black cardstock now already you can see where this card is going and i'm really hopeful 
that uh, you think it's a nice looking card when all is said and done and already that's ready to fall out do you see the detail it cut into all that isn't that pretty so pretty now let's bring this back i want one more out of here yeah i just went through my black scraps and decided i would uh, um just bring a few pieces out i think i probably got out more than I am going to need. And let's bring this one up. And sometimes you may have to poke it out. That hole, it's not really in the middle, but it's toward the middle, actually releases the whole thing. I don't know how well you can see that on camera so that you can get a hold of it. Let me gently pry that off. There we go. Now, one other thing I want to cut out of the black cardstock while I have it here. Actually, two things I want to cut out of it. So, at this point, let me get my dies back out. And I'm going to put away that big one. Now, where did I just lay it? All right, it's laying here somewhere. I will get it and retrieve it. Um, I want to cut, this is the stem right here. Beautiful stem. And you have flexibility with it. Because if you need to, you can, uh, you can shorten it. You can cut it if it's too big for your particular design. I'm going to try to sketch this over the best I can. And then, there are a couple of dies in here that just do some fine branching. Here's another one that's a lot bigger. Uh, and I'm going to use this one for the inside of my card. And then if you notice, here is one die that cuts out five little petals all at one time. And we're going to do that too, but we're going to do it out of the white. So I actually have just enough room here to go ahead and die cut that. And then... I'll bring in the white scraps so that we can do the white part of the flowers. But I wanted you to see close up about the dies. I mean, the stamp set itself is beautiful. It's awesome. It's tremendous. But sometimes we don't always get an in-depth look at what the dies do. So if I can very carefully extract that out of there without bending it's there i just need to get it out there we go so look at that isn't that pretty and you know i gotta tell you it almost reminded me of and i just dropped it where'd it go oh there it is it's down here let me retrieve my stem so there's our stem and I love the fact they gave such a big area to put your glue on to hold your flower together. So this scrap is done for. I can't do anything else with it. Now let me get my other die here and my scrap of white because we also want two of these as well. And since I know... I'm going to need those five individual petals. I'm going to lay this right over here. Tuck it up as close as I can get it. So I want to make real sure I have room for that second petal in the white. Okay. Let's get this side of here. Oh my goodness, there's a flower stuck to my cutting tray and one stuck to the magnet. And I'm not real sure where the rest went, but I think they're still in the die. So let's get this out, this off. And I think I'm going to take out of my putty tool. Let's see, I'm going to put these in my little dish over here to the side. It's probably off camera to you. Y'all have seen that little dish before. It's actually a little magnetized dish. 
but it also comes in so handy to catch all these little die cuts. So let's see if that'll let me pick it up. It did. Put that over here. Now let's get out this one. And again, it works just the same. This one is right in the middle. And you see how well it just pushed that whole petal right off. So we've got that. And we want to cut that petal one more time. Plus, not only do we want to cut that petal one more time, um, I, oops, look what I did. I left one of those little flowers in there. Let me poke that out real quick. There it went. Get a hold of it and put it with the others over there to the side. And the only other thing I want to cut out is one of the middles of the flowers. And, uh, oh, that tells me, too, on that black scrap that I didn't have room for was the middle of the flower. Also, to be die cut in black. And I'm hoping this video is not going to be very long. I'm actually trying to move pretty fast here without it being a blur. And y'all know me, I don't edit my videos. So, what you see is what you get. Let me kind of get that off of there. I actually brought out a new cutting plate that I had ordered some time back. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking at the time that they were out of stock at Stamping Up. And so, I, um, I ordered the Sizzix because they work too. Alright, let me try to get this up and off here. And you'll see it cut out the middle. That's scrap. And uh, so here's this one. Let me put this die back up. And bring in... I've got some little scraps here of black so that we can cut out the middle of that flower. Uh, the big part... The big middle part and we'll get this cut real quick and then I think all of our pieces will be cut it's just a matter of putting them together and finishing our design that moved awfully close did I get it all that did that moved real close yep I got it all and so on here, you do have the two, but I felt it, I felt it come loose into my hand. So there's the middle. Lay that down here. Here's that die. I need to scoop that up. Put that back over here in my case. And here's the die I was looking for. So, very quickly, let me put those back in here. I'm not sure exactly how I had all this laying in here. It doesn't really matter. As long as I have room, and I do, there we go. Awesome. Now I know they're all contained. They're all safe and sound. Get my scrap out of here, and we should be done with the uh, die cutting and embossing. Now at this point, so that y'all can readily see what's going on, let's get our pieces put back on here. Um, except for those little teeny tiny blooms. I'm just going to let them stay in that dish over here to the side. And I've left this undone. Let me redo that. There we go. Didn't feel like it was clogged. That's good. That's real good. Um, so, where's my card base? I covered it up over here. Now, when we are going to be using that same sentiment I showed you on my sample flower, sending flowers and thinking of you. All right, so, a lot of times when we have dyes that layer flower petals, they, like with their daisy sets that we've had, you can cut to an offset. Not so much with the flowering zinnia. You're not going to totally get it offset. And a zinnia, true to life, is not offset either. 
um, because there's layers upon layers upon layers of petals depending on what variety you grow. So we're going to start out and we're going to glue these two together. But when all is said and done, it is actually beautiful. And you saw how easy it cut. I didn't struggle with it. Even though my sandwich is actually a little bit thinner than the normal sandwich because of the way I have done that um, that plate. So, anyway, we're going to put this on here and get this layered best we can. Like I said, it's not going to totally offset. Do you see? Some of them are pretty much just right on top of each other, but that's okay. Now, I'm going to layer that right on top here, and you'll see the magic happen as you start to put these layers together. Look at that. It has got lots of dimension. I hope it's showing up well for you on camera. I hope it is. I'm going to put a little bit of glue there. We're going to take this big center and lay that in just like so. And kind of look at it and see kind of where you want your stem coming from. Honestly, because it's a zinnia, it doesn't really matter how you choose to do that. And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to get my reverse tweezers. Guys, for those of you, and, and I know the thinking is out there because I've had it said to me in my card classes that... Um, they're not going to order reverse tweezers because they just don't think they could get used to it. Let me tell you, it's actually very intuitive, and you will take to it like a duck to water. You will. I'm going to lay that right there. Hold that for just a second. There we go. It's already gripped it. Already gripped it. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Okay. We are going to take, now when you get ready to do yours, and I hope y'all do this, you can do black and white, you can do any colors you pick, right? Because we're not using any of the designer series paper, we're not using the bling that's part of that or anything. So, decide if you put this right in the middle, you're going to have a stem about like so. I actually wanted mine a little bit longer, so I'm going to move mine down just a bit so that I have a longer stem, and I'm going to put the glue right here on the front side. I'm actually going to put more than that, and then I'm just going to kind of lay this kind of, I don't know how well you can see, but I'm coming down from the middle, almost about to where those flower petals start. I'm going to hold that for a second. Kind of let that be getting set up and put together. Okay. So what do you think? Isn't it pretty? I grow zinnias from seed every year. I quit buying the plants. They are so expensive. Guys, zinnia seeds are so easy to germinate. They are. Um, and if you're like me and you don't really have room for grow lights and all that stuff in your home, it's okay. Um, put them in a plastic jug. Look that up on YouTube. Garden Answer has got some great videos showing exactly how to do that. It'll be so easy and you can do it all outside. They'll be protected. It'll be awesome. Because that's how I did mine last year. And, of course, I did forget to put any glue on the stem, of course, because I'm talking about gardening. And that's where my mind is going instead of on what I should be doing here. So I'm going to hold that for just a second. Kind of let that solidify. But I love black and white. Sometimes you just don't need all the things. Um... When we're on a budget and we have to figure out, okay, what can I afford to get? What am I going to use the most of? And I don't know about you guys, very first thing when I'm looking at something and I'm gravitated toward it, it's like, oh, that's so cute or oh, that's so pretty. 
then I back up and I go, okay, how much am I really going to use this? How flexible is it going to be? Can I use it for a variety of sentiments and types of cards? Can I use it for mail cards? I, I do all kinds of critiquing before I buy what I buy. Okay, now we are going to bring in silicone mat. This is a little glue mat. That Stampin' Up! sales. You can tell I use it. Now, <laughs> I really should have gave it a bath before starting the video, and I didn't. That's okay. I am looking for that little, up oh, right here, this little black piece. I want to make sure I have it right side up. I'm going to lay it on my mat. Take my tweezers, and you can see where I was working on that other card. And I'm going to get these little, I call them flowers, but to be honest, guys, don't they look like stars? You could accident, uh, ass. <laughs> you could actually, I'll get it out in a minute, use that and uh, put stars on a birthday card or a 4th of July card. Um, I really do feel like this set is so versatile. All right, I am going to put one right up at the very top. I'm going to press that down. Press it down. That's why I wanted to work on the glue mat, because these pieces are so tiny. I'm going to pick this one up. Put the glue on here. And because it cuts out five at a time, you already have your, your even number, right? You do. I'm going to lay one here. Yeah, I was happy with the glue, but it's barely art glue. It will dry clear and not sticky, so no worries. That's one of the reasons why it's one of my favorite glues. Okay, let's get another one. Get it glued on there. These are setting up as we talk. Yeah, I did put it on the back side. And I want to put one right there. You could definitely cut more if you wanted to. But uh, I felt like five was perfect for this. Not every little place is going to have a flower. There's going to be some that will be, um, you know, ready to develop flower buds, but not quite there yet. And put that back on there. I'm going to make sure... The black stem isn't showing. I only want that white showing right there. And then on this last one, I'm going to put it right up here. And that's me. The way you do yours, you do yours. And there we go. There we go. And now we have our five. You could have easily, off, you know, took this one and put it up here. It was going to be so close to that one. I thought, nah, I'm just not going to bother with that. So there we go. I got a little black card stock right there. I may be able to get that off later. And then I'm going to put glue on the back of this. And we're going to pop that just inside our card. And I think it's so cute. So cute. There we go. I'm going to put it. Let me get in camera. And I'm just going to lay that right there. And that brings some more of that pretty black and white to the inside of the card. And I'm thinking whatever that is, I can get that off. I think so. All right, we're good there. We're good there. Now we have our sentiment to do. I'm going to go ahead and recap my glue bottle because it's going to take just a hot minute to do that. Let's move this out of the way that done and I'm going to bring in my Misty yes I still have my Stamparatus yes I still love it yes I still use it but you can't order it you can order the Misty so I have got the sending flowers and thinking of you in here and I'm going to lay I just got into my, my scrap bin and got out a scrap that I knew was longer than I needed. I've got my sticky mat in here. It's going to hold it down. And for good measure, y'all have seen me do this before. Let me line this up straight with this line right down here. 
just like so. And I know I'm good when it's not straight. It is not straight up here. I'm going to get that straight. It's not straight down here either. And I'm sticking to it. Now it's straight. You want your plastic even to be straight. You do. And this is how you're going to know before you stamp if you have indeed especially on a long stamp like this one is, that you really are good to go, that it really is straight across. And there we go. What do you think? I don't know how well y'all can see it because I barely touched it down. I don't know if you can see that under there, but it is straight. And the easiest way I found to clean it, I take my stamp and scrub. I haven't used it today, so I know it's dry. And I put a little bit on there. I lift this up, and I make sure that's cleaned off, just like so. And then I put it on the dry side, and boom, it's ready to go again. Now, fingerprints, things like that get on there. I don't care. I'm only using it to make sure my stamping is straight. Uh, if you want to get real technical with yours and, you know, um, go over it with a fine tooth comb, that's fine too. You do you. I just go ahead and make sure that ink is off so it doesn't recontaminate something down the road and go right ahead and get this put together. I'm not sure if I'm going to fussy cut this or not. Isn't that pretty? It's a little light, and you may not be able to see it. I think it's just a little light in the word flowers. So I'm going to go back and ink that again, gently. Our stamp pads, you don't have to smoosh them down. And let me... I'm just barely touching this. I've told y'all before, I do have the foam mat that's in here that normally you only use with photopolymer, but I have learned I can just leave it in there. Um, I don't have to worry about it as long as I'm not pushing too hard. And now, now you can see, isn't that gorgeous and solid? Oh, and I may have put a little bit too much ink. This is a really juicy ink pad. It's juicy because I re-inked it the other day, and uh, I think I might have put a little bit too much, but that's okay. I'm learning how to deal with it. And then take your chamois, or if you were fortunate enough to get the Glass Mat Studio, this is a little cleaning cloth that came in there. It works just like the chamois. It is just thinner, okay? Um, you will occasionally want to go and rinse it out under the sink, just like we do the chamois. No bleaching, ladies. Don't bleach your stuff. You're never going to make it look like new, and all you're going to do is degrade the materials that it's made out of, and it's not going to last you as long. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and close that up because I know that's in there. Set that to the side. Put my little cleaning cloth away. I'm excited. I can't wait until Stamping Up offers that glass mat studio to everybody. Now, I am going to bring my trimmer in ever so quickly. We're going to trim this down. And I will measure it when I get done because, honestly, I don't know. Do I want to do four inches? If I cut it there, I'm going to have... I'm going to have more, let's see, let me try this, see if that's close enough, and, and even save that, like those little tiny flowers we just die cut, absolutely, so, so save that, don't throw it away, and I've still got just a little bit more there than I do on the other end, so now I am at three and three quarters of an inch in length. And that might be a little skinnier than on this side. We can always take and cut. I'm going to move it down one sixteenth, one little tick mark. And I hope this blade 
is sharp enough to get even that little shard, and it is. So now it looks more even. At this point, if you wanted to cut more off of the top and bottom, you could. You could absolutely do a much skinnier version. I kind of like it being wide and those vivid black letters and words. So now we're going to get this and bring it in. At this point, you decide, yes, I put mine over to the left. You could absolutely put your flower in the middle, uh, however you want to do it. You could raise it, lower it. Um, it is such a flexible set to design with. And I'm looking to see how much space I have on each side. And I'm just going to glue it down flat. I'm not using dimensionals this time. I know, surprise, surprise. But I do want to make sure I get plenty of glue on the back so that it attaches very well to that embossed background plus it's going over the stem now the stem is um, flat nice and flat but you know that's still going to have a little bit of bulk I say bulk it's it, it's going to add a little bit not much so do you see how well that's laying on there if I tilt that just right see how easy that is to do you could have a die cutting party while you're watching TV or talking on the phone. Um, yeah, yeah, awesome. Now, what I do want to do and what I didn't do before the video, um, and I actually had to go back and look in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog to see if they were even still current, but we had those um, matte dots. It was the vanilla the black and the gray. I found them in the annual catalog. They are still current. However, y'all want to see what a mess my embellishments are? <laughs> so this is something I keep underneath here. Do you see this mess? I don't have anything labeled. I have these pockets that I ordered some time back. I'm not sure where I ordered them from. And they do have these little stand-up tabs uh, where you can, you know, label everything well honey i'm too cheap i'm not gonna buy a pocket for every bit of bling a lot of mine is older can you tell this was from what three years ago um but i'm, I'm not getting rid of it because i still use it so i just stick them in here and then i flip through to see what colors I am wanting to get into it, and y'all can't even see what I'm seeing. So, no, and I know I've got them. I know I do. Um, looky there, 2021 to 2023 in color opal rounds. But I've loved them. I still love them. Here's some pastel adhesive back sequins. Doesn't look like I've ever even opened them, but I know I have because I cut the top off. Remember the uh, champagne rhinestones? I cried when they got rid of them. I love these. So I'm very judicious <laughs> in how I use them. All right, they're not here. Yeah, here's some more of those. They were cotton. That one's brand new. Adhesive back seasonal sequins. I'd have to go back in the older catalogs to uh, see... Um, where I got them at. Here's some old heart droplets. Look at that. But I love them because you can color them with a Stampin' Blend alcohol marker. Mm -hmm. Yep. There they are. Classic matte dots. So that might be white, but it looks off white. So I'm going to say they're very vanilla. And the basic, no, that's not basic gray. Is that basic gray? And then black, and you can tell I've hit that black hard and heavy over time. However, I have just enough for today. So, there, that gave y'all a sneak peek into some of my mess. Um, <laughs> it works for me, what can I tell you? I am not one of those fancy uh, demonstrators that... Uh, now, what I, I'm also wanting to do... So you have some flat background areas. I don't know how well that's showing for you where you can lay your bling. 
if you can't find a flat area to put your bling, then just put down a drop of glue. That works. And put your bling on top, and then you know you're going to be good to go. And so I want three of these. And I don't want them spread out too far and wide. Because right in here, this, you know, we're pulling the eye into about the center of the card. And I think I will put that one right there. Could have actually put all three of them side by side in a little line um, with the sentiment. And that would have been cute too. But there's one more thing I want to do, so don't leave yet. Thank you all for your support. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for your subscriptions. You guys are amazing. You're just amazing. Um, I'm so humbled by each and every one of you. In a recent video, I told you guys that I had recently bought a three-pack off of Amazon. And I showed you what the goal looked like. In case you missed it, I'm going to show it again. Um... Stampin' Up! gives us, sells us the clear. These are actually made by a company. It is a Japanese company, and I don't know if you can read that on there. Uh, it's spelled K-U-R-E-T-A-K-E. -E. It is pronounced Kuratake. Kuratake is how you pronounce it. I didn't know how. I had to look it up. I had to Google it to find out how to pronounce it. But it's Kuratake. Very, I don't know. To me, that's just got a beautiful sound. And I showed you the gold. And I'm going to show you the silver. See how vivid and intense that silver is? There we go. And then as part of the third pack, and I was thinking it was like champagne colored or something, but it's clear. It's clear just like we get from stamping up. And so you're not really going to be able to see that on that white. Let me try to hold it up. Maybe I can get it to show in the light a little bit. So I want to take this one, and I'm just going into the middle of that flower. I could have took one that I already have laying here from stamping up, but I honestly couldn't remember what the third one was. Now, a few minutes before filming this video, I went back into my orders on Amazon, and I clicked on it because I had bought this three-pack in 2023, um, and it is no longer available, or at least it's currently unavailable on Amazon. Do a Google search. Do a three-pack of Winkastella. You don't even have to remember how to spell Kuratake, okay? You don't. And, of course, you know, you're not going to really be able to see that on camera. I wish you could. Um, but it just has that little something-something that just sets the whole card off. So what do you think of the black and white, guys? Sometimes just going back to basics. Uh, I've really been into the basics here lately because our card ministry program, we've started a new year. We're having to design and make our cards for, in the card ministry for 2025. All right, let me bring back in. And so Simple, Simple is the name of the game. So here is this one. With the DSP, pure and simple, cut your panel, do your sentiment, boom, you're done. You don't even particularly have to put bling on there because mine just kind of like got lost in all that color, right? I mean, it's there. Your recipient will see it easier than you can on camera, however. And then um, that was my first play with layering. And I did do two layers of the Sweet Sorbet. And I did do two layers of the Pink Flamingo. And I used Old Olive for the leaves and the stem. And in that set, and I didn't point it out. So see those? Yep, they're in there too, honey. They are in there too. So right here is the die cut for the stem whoops, that I used. And then the flower was this one, 
and I cut this one out of the flirty flamingo and this one's a little bit bigger and so I cut it out of the sweet sorbet layered one on top of the other and boom there you had it I'll have to fix all my mess later and get there they are they're attached all right I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope it kind of gives you a little bit of inspiration. And if you decide not to get this set or you don't really want this set, go back and look at what you have in your stash. Black and white is so elegant. It never goes out of style. And, you know, we didn't use any DSP. We used white and black cardstock, some die cuts, stamped a sentiment, and we were done. We were done. If you don't have any black bling, find some bling. Color it black. You could even use a Sharpie. Yes, a Sharpie will work if you do not have Stampin' Blends. That is just fine. Guys, I'm not going to be doing Tuesday Lives anymore, uh, at least for right now. Um, and i tell you why. I've got a lot on me. I've got card classes coming up. Um, I have a new challenge with a support group that's going to be happening uh, sooner than I think. Time will get away from me if I am not careful. It is also that time of the year where I have some seed starting and some basic gardening and things that I need to get done. Um, this has been a while. This is a first day this week that I've been at home. I've been going somewhere and doing something every day this week, and it's put me so behind. So, guys, until we meet again, it'll be next Friday. It'll be a pre-recorded video. I will do my best to um, incorporate some premieres, and a premiere is a pre-recorded video. However, if I tell YouTube I want to premiere it, I can be with you. When the video releases, I can see your comments and I can respond to you in real time. It just isn't live. It's kind of like the best of both worlds, pre-recorded and live, okay? So I will do my best to work on that and hopefully I can start bringing you better content, kind of taking this back to the one video a week that I did for well over a year um, but yeah, and, and I'm sorry there's not more of me to go around. I'm so sorry if I disappointed anybody. But in the meantime, guys, y'all have a very blessed weekend. Stay safe. Know you're loved. God is good all the time. Bye.